Okay, so I was bored because I'm still waiting for some parts which will be in hopefully this week to build the maglev. So I took this rotor which has been a failed rotor for the longest time and I think it was because I had too many magnets on it. I don't know. But I turned it into a kind of a maglev. I've got two separate magnets right there and so it's kind of bouncing on that. So the only friction is actually on the wall of the shaft. So it spins really freely. And of course, I jerry-rigged this thing together. Gotta love hot glue, right? And uh, we'll get it going for you. I've got it hooked up to the super caps. This beautiful circuit that Sir Sky Collection made for me. I made one of my own over here and it works great. But this one's a lot easier to hook up. So let me pause this. And there it goes. It's a little bit on the wobbly side as you can see, but it's definitely working. See the uh, neons when I switch it. But yeah, it's got a bit of a wobble or a bounce to it because of that magnetic bearing, so to speak. I've got to fix it so it doesn't do that. But I'm going to do some tests on this because this rotor, when I had the, what was it, eight magnets on it, I couldn't get it to work for nothing. But that was in the vertical. Now that I have it horizontal... Here, let me turn up the... Maybe with some more speed. Anyway, here's the finished rotor, too. I put some resin on the ends there just to make it look nicer. But it's balanced pretty nice. But I'm stuck right now. I can't... I can't, um, I can't go any further because I'm waiting on some, actually, I'm going to see if I can't rig it up today somehow. I really don't want to do that, though. I want to take my time with the maglev. I've taken my time building it so far, and everything's coming out really nice. Anyway, just wanted to show you what I've been playing with because, like I said, I'm bored, still waiting on some parts for the maglev. You know, this has got four poles. It actually has 12 magnets on it, but there are three on each pole. North, south, north, south. I'm going to see what happens when I do what I usually do, and that's put more magnets on. Ciao. So this is really weird. So now it has eight magnets on it, or eight poles, two on each pole. And I couldn't get it to work for the life of me, so I figured it was too many magnets. But now, it, it was the speed. I had to actually get it started really fast in order for it to, I guess, catch. And again, this is that, this is that um, floating magnetic bearing, bearing type setup. But now it's working. I could not get it to catch before. I don't know if it was the speed or it just needed, yeah, I'm kind of baffled. But now it's working with eight poles. I seem to remember something from years ago that the amount of poles does matter, but I, I don't remember what it was in relationship to. I think it was in relationship to how many coils you have. So if you have like six coils you need seven magnets or vice versa or something i'm not really sure but now yeah and i can tell that it's working when i turn off the uh charging circuit so yeah um, i'm not really sure why it was able to catch that time but you can see how it bounces up and down like that it is kind of wobbly but hey like I said, I was bored. I had nothing else better to do. 
And so I also got a hold of some of these. These are um, wireless coils for a cell phone device. I'm going to use these coils as pickup for something. I'm not really sure, but I know that they work really well. And I got this thing basically for nothing. Anyway, ciao. All right, dear viewer, I've done a great injustice. I've had my hands on this beautiful pancake coil that Mr. Sky Collection made for me, and I have yet to actually use it. This thing will run at high speed, as low as six volts. This is a beautiful coil. Here, let me, let me fire it up. So that's six volts. So here, let me And that's 12 volts. And it goes kind of crazy at 12 volts, which is why I want I only run it at a very low voltage. 12 volts, 400 milliamps. Let me turn it back down. Eight volts charging up this super cap, which is at about seven or eight volts now, just from playing around here. Let me get my um, my meter out. Let's see what it says. See what we got here. Yeah, six volts, six point nine, six ten, and that's at eight volts. The run battery. Yeah, this coil does a great job. It is a beautiful coil. It weighs a lot, too. It's really heavy. Because he put, I think, about eight layers in there. Where the one I did, I only did the one layer. I don't even know what the speed is or if I can even... Let me see if I can get the tack on it. So it says it's running at about 10,000. Yeah, about 10,000 RPM. And that's only, that's at 8 volts. I could turn it down even more. There's 6.8 volts. And at this speed, it still runs, but there's almost no back EMF. I mean, it's there, but it's not enough to even affect the uh, the lamps. But yeah, I thought I should actually try this out. I can't believe I've had it for all this time and I've not tried it out. It's a great disservice. Sorry about that, Sky. But yeah, it works great. Okay. Okay, some more boredom stuff. So, I want to do an experiment with this coil right here. It looks like a normal bifiler coil, right? Well, it isn't. It's actually an old coil that was a single wound coil. And I needed a bifiler coil to do a different experiment. Now, normally, when you wrap a bifiler coil, you wrap the wires together. Some people even twist the wires. They actually extend it out about 50 feet and twist it before they wrap it but then they wrap it together well this one was already wrapped with a i think it was a 28 gauge wire 
and I didn't want to unwrap the coil. So what I did was over that coil, I wrapped a second thicker wire. I think it was like a 24 gauge, not much thicker. So instead of them being wound together, I, um, I did one on top of the other. Now, in theory, that really shouldn't make too much of a difference, but I don't know. I've never tried a Bedini circuit with a bifiler coil that's been wound in that way, one on top of the other instead of together. So let me get this hooked up and we'll see what happens. All right, now that I got it all hooked up, let's see how it works. Now remember, this is a bifiler coil, but one wrapped over the other instead of together. I've never tried a coil like this. Let's see what we got. Well, it doesn't seem to make any real difference. That's at 11 volts. Still charging up the um, super caps. I will say it does seem to affect the back EMF. Because if you look over here, when I turn the back EMF off, it doesn't doesn't seem to be shooting a lot of power at it. Let me see what the uh, meter says. Let me see what kind of power it's producing, if any. Yeah, it's definitely producing some back EMF through the circuit. Everything seems to be okay as far as the circuit goes. It's not getting hot, but when I turn it off, it barely lights up the um, it barely lights up the neons. So that's gosh, I wonder why that is. Oh, okay, so if I play with the potentiometer, so now it's opened all the way up. So when I play with the potentiometer, it it does affect, the, well, of course, it'll affect the back, BM, the back EMF. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, so it works. So I can take some of these older coils that I have and turn them into, whoa, that resistor is getting hot. Turn them into um, bifiler coils. All right, cool.